What's going on, you guys? It's Kenny Briggs, sports consultant and mentor. Today's conversation is all about how to have a successful 2024 season, how to make this one that you, you will remember, and just overall have fun. Many times, athletes just focus on improving every single day, um, hitting PRs, hitting big marks, winning everything, but it really is so much more than just that. You don't want to focus just on, can I win everything? even though that would be a very fun experience, right? But it comes down to the journey of learning. And if it's always just perfect every single time, it's not as memorable, right? You never you never really see movies that are just like happy the whole time. There's always some sort of conflict. There's always some sort of, you know, trial and tribulation, something that makes it exciting to watch, right? And then it makes their, their win just that much more valuable. It's the same exact concept when it comes down to your competition this year is you want to actually focus on learning growing um, going through adversity and that adversity will help you just develop so much more so when you do reach your ultimate goal it's a goal that you feel like i truly deserve this and i went through so much and it means so much to me okay so i'm going to go through a few things the first thing is um having a goal and your attitude these things kind of go hand in hand the very first thing is having a set specific goal of your destination. Also, when you have this goal destination, you want to be very descriptive of what your actual goal looks like. If it's make the Olympic team, if it's win state, win nationals, whatever it may be, you can't just let it just be that, right? You got to think about who do you have to become in order to be a national champion? Who do you have to become in order to be a state track and field champion? You know, there's a lot of people out there that have the same desire as you. And the biggest thing is when you have specific goals, you work from your ultimate goal backwards. So if your ultimate goal is to be an Olympian, right? Then Olympians typically won state championships. They typically were a national good level athlete. You want to have these things in your bag, essentially, when it comes down to experiences. So what I will say is, let's say your goal for this year, to make it even a little more simple, is to be a state champion. In order to be a state champion, who do you have to become? I get to be a leader. I get to be positive. I get to be um, assertive. I get to be organized in my management. I get to be a student of the sport all these characteristics, right? If you're not being in those things, then it's harder for you to become the person you want to become because a state champion just doesn't by chance become a state champion. That person is an actual person. A state champion is a person, is a certain character, is a certain way of being, and you want to make sure you find those things. If you're not sure, simply contact a state champion that you know, whether it's a person in your state, a different state, um, just DM them on social media and you're going to be able to find some good information. Even if you don't ask them, just talk to them and then you'll be able to kind of get a feel of who they are and what they're about. When it comes to your attitude, um, obviously you cannot be the most negative person and expect to reach all your goals. If I was your goal, right? Like me, a person was to be your goal. So I was state champion. I would interview you and I would say, all right, you. What is it that would make me want to join you as, as a person, as an athlete, right? Why would I want to go with you and not the other person? And if you're like, well, you know, I, I, I work hard, um, you know, uh, I just, I just kind of want it because I really wanted to win. I'm not going to be excited about that. I'm not going to want to say, well, okay, I'd rather go with the person that is like, if you know, I'm excited to be with you. Um, and also I'm going to go on vacation. I'm going to go to the Bahamas. Uh, I'm going to celebrate this. I'm going to post you on social media all the time. I'm going to brag. Like, I'd be like, yo, that looks a lot more fun. This experience looks more fun than the other person, right? Me, me being your goal, I would want to be with someone that is fun, fun, loving, happy, energetic, excited, all those things, which circles back to you got to be that person, right? I've, I've never seen a person win a championship and be mad about it, right? They may not be fully content. 
you know, are happy about maybe the way that it came about. But at the end of the day, they're like, I did what I wanted to do and I'm accomplished and I'm happy about it. All right. So make sure those important, those things are important to you. Okay. The next thing is becoming a student. You have to be a student of your sport. It's very important that you're watching your own film. It's very important that you understand some of your strong points and also your weaknesses. If you are in a place where you're not studying what you do, then you can't expect to get a good result. Just as you can't expect to get an A plus in a class or a test if you've never studied for it, right? Now, of course, you might have people that can get passing grades and all those things, but you get what I'm trying to say. Is don't expect greatness if you're not putting in the levels of greatness, because that's just how it goes, right? When I was training, I was always a student of the sport. I was studying myself. I was watching other athletes on my team. I was, you know, asking other athletes that were jumping further than me. Whenever I had a track meet, I interviewed them. I said, hey, you know, what are you doing differently? What's the training schedule like? Um, whatever it is, I just kept asking questions, learning. And as I learned, I kept developing, right? You have to make sure that you spend the time to become the best you you can on and off the track. Okay, so now the next one is map out your schedule. What I mean by this is, if you're looking to be a state champion, why are you focused on hitting big marks in the indoor season? Why are you focused on being back at full approach from the very first track meet and having to hit these national qualifying marks? It's not important. To be honest, you only need one jump to be the best ever. Now, of course, you got to get to the rounds, you know, to be uh, get to the state championship and be in the state final. But you only need one jump. And the biggest thing is going to be like, if you map out your schedule and say, okay, this is important. I'll use this example. Last year, Ethan Fong, Ethan Fong uh, improved five feet in triple jump last year, and he was uh, a state qualifier, finished third overall. And so we mapped out his overall season. And we said, okay, you're going to do long and you're also going to do triple jump. And state championship was on May 25th, something like that, right? Then we had the prelims of state championship on the Friday. Then we had our masters like semifinals on the week before, that Friday before. And I said, okay, masters, there's six jumps for long jump and um, triple jump. So let's say you, you use all of your jumps. That's going to be 12 jumps. Now let's say you go to the prelims. You get three jumps for long and triple. And you use those. Okay. Now you're looking at 15 jumps. And then you go to the state championship for long and triple. You do six triple and six long. Right. Another 12. So that's 24 um, plus another three. Right. 27 jumps. Most high school athletes only do four jumps for long and triple, right? So in that essential eight days, he's doing almost three track meets. And it's very important that we say, okay, we got to make sure that we manage these jumps. We're going to take some jumps away. We want to qualify on this jump and just put together a schedule. So I say that that's a smaller scale, but now let's go on a bigger scale. You're doing indoor and you're doing outdoor track right? And you're doing long, triple, and high jump or whatever, every single track meet. Some states have a track meet for dual meets. Then you have a weekend track meet invitational. Then you have another dual meet. Well, that's three track meets in one week. That's a lot, right? If you're doing all these events, it's important to know what you're doing and how much wear and tear you're putting on your body. So mapping out your schedule and saying, okay, these are the meets that I really want to go to. These are the meets I have to go to. There's how many jumps I'm going to be doing. When you see that, you're going to realize that's a lot. And as I'm trying to get better, I'm actually doing more jumps. I want to figure out how to decrease that. It might require you to remove some events. It might require you to focus on other ones. It all depends. But mapping that out is going to be very crucial and very important. The next thing is going to be um, wearing the right gear. I'm a, I'm a big supporter of Adidas. You know, we've always done well with Adidas. I've had less complaints with Adidas. Now, when it comes to like, you know, athletic gear, shoes, you can wear whatever you want, whatever's comfortable for you because there's so many options out there. But when it comes to triple jump spikes, I really advise that you focus on getting Adidas. 
I do have videos. I want to say it's up here somewhere, over here or over here. Either way, uh, it's going to be like what spikes are the best, what spikes should you buy, and et cetera. Watch that video because it's going to really help you understand what to buy. Um, but just, you know, when you look the part, then you feel the part, and then you are the part. You know, you've never seen a person who's completely out of shape win the 100 meter dash. They're going to be completely in shape. And so you want to be in shape and also wear the clothes of a champion, be in the base of a champion, have all these layers um, around you to help you be the best you can be. And the last thing is going to be good feedback. It's very important to have a successful 2024 season is by getting feedback. And what I mean by that is like, am I doing well? What do you see me doing? Uh, here's my jumps. Can you please review my jumps and let me know where I can improve? What are some flaws that I have? Getting feedback is very important for all areas of life. And when it comes to jumps specifically, you want someone that can help give you feedback on what's going on in your jumps so you can make those adjustments. Now, you may not always have the person that can physically tell you how to improve. And also, you may not have a coach that can physically tell you how to improve each and individ each individual jump right? You want real-time feedback when you're competing. You also want feedback each week. And it's very important that you find a mentor or a coach that can help that can help with that. I offer those services. Please check those out with the Jump 101 um, when it comes to the DVAs, all those things. But it's very important that you're able to assess what's happening and make the adjustments. All right. So if you follow these things I just said today, you will see a huge improvement in your overall ability on and off the track. Why? Because when you're, if you know where you're going, you are studying what's happening. You are thinking and training the way you should. You're doing everything right. You have your schedule planned out. You are so prepared for a successful season and all comes around being prepared. So if you have any further questions, please comment them below or direct uh, message me directly or email me directly at info at All right. Till next time.